Well, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready okay. if you're ready. All right. All right. <laughs> At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. We're welcoming back one of our beloved guests from a few years ago that is an amazing voice in this community. Mm -hmm. She does so many different things. Uh, Esoteric Essa. She's an astrologer, numerologist, like, um, She's the creator of the modern uh, spiritual Latina Oracle deck that we're going to carry at both of the stores. We're working through that right now, but you know, (laughs) so I'm excited to even like play with that deck. But I mean, we're going to be talking about a few different things today, but some very timely um, discussions that are very much hot buttons within um, within the world right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, Mm -hmm. they're important uh, conversations and things that need to be had to make some changes in society, discussing the importance of releasing guilt and shame, Mm -hmm. uh, poverty mindset, uh, Mm -hmm. and, you know, allowing that, especially in, um, in the under, under impoverished and, and native communities, whether that is, uh, of color, of different, um, uh, discriminations and, you Mm -hmm. know, you know, you kind of look at it as the BPOC community, but it's really like, it's, it's everybody that needs to really have this awareness. And I think anybody that's listening to, no matter where, had um, poverty needs a shift change needs to happen it's happening all over the planet right now so welcome I love that intro thank you Christina for having me and um, shout out to the whole liberate family shout out to Ellie Rebecca you have such an amazing team I'm so grateful to be working with y'all and knowing y'all for like the last two years I think we originally connected in 2018 so wild right how time flies um I do want to preface to everybody, we're, we're in the midst of Mercury retrograde. So Christina and I are doing our best to push through any possible tech issues. If that's, you know, if that's the case, bear with us. We love your patience, but I'm so grateful to be here. Um, I also just want to mention, you know, this is a wonderful conversation for, for anybody who is a spiritualist or a, a spiritual practitioner, because to your point, when we come into, you know, the embodiment of, hey, I'm ready to lead, I'm ready to hold space, I'm ready to facilitate. How do I start price pointing? How do I start pricing my worth, especially when we come out of, you know, a capitalistic society, corporate America? Uh, we're really undervalued, especially as women and women of color and people of color. So I'm so happy that we're having this dialogue, Christina, so that we can um, help other people who might be going through this. This is something I notice a lot in my one on ones with the community yeah. and the collective. And tell me if, if you, you know, if you vibe with this, Christina, but uh, I think oftentimes, we need to hear other people give us permission before we give ourselves permission, right? Oh, so many times, mm-hmm. especially, I mean, I think that that's human nature a lot of times is that there's this over need for acceptance. And so it's like, okay, am, am I worthy? Am I worth it? Is that okay? And then, you know, we can't forget, and I love that that, that this is this conversation, is that a, mm-hmm. people fight against their their upbringings, right? And cultural heritage, mm-hmm. lineages, um, no matter what, you know, like in that mindset and that programming from like a hypnotherapist point of view is like, whatever mm. you see growing up, whatever you hear growing up, you're a sponge, you take that in as that's, that's the reality. And that's what's okay for maybe your family or the people that raised you or the community of which that you were around. And then you say, okay, well, then that's what it is for me. And then we try to change as we get older, but we don't realize that all of this is so imprinted. And then if you take that back lineages, you're, you know, it can all be cleared though. And it can be <laughs> Yes. Accepted. <laughs> I love that you stated all of that so well put because, you know, I do have to address, granted, I am privileged. I am a light-skinned Latina. I am white-passing Latina, right? So I, I can, you know, say with humility that I do kind of have an advantage, right, when it comes to 
anti-blackness and racism, you know, in the collective. So I can speak from that privilege. I'm very aware of that privilege. And so I just want to, you know, <laughs> share that with the collective. Um, but also it's really important, like you said, culturally, especially as Latinx or Latin communities, um, you know, we're taught, don't ask for more. Growing up, I was told by my elders, my family, don't push it. Don't ask for more. Don't go for that raise. Be happy with what you've got. So I was supposed to be happy with the bare minimum simply because I was taking up space, possibly having a seat at the table, but uh, through tokenism, right? So I should be happy just for that alone. Um, so that was really hard for me personally to work through when I was decolonizing my mindset and working through shame, guilt, and poverty mindset that you know, women and women of color, people of color are really facing on a daily basis, whether you're a spiritualist or whether you're an executive assistant, whether you're the janitor, whether you're working in facilities, you know? So what is your take on that? Tell me, talk to me, Christina. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I think that it's, and especially as you mentioned, women in general uh, have mm -hmm. that. It's, it's this idea that, you know, it, it kind of, it's interesting in the spiritual community too, is that there's like this, this over push of like, you should just be grateful, be grateful mm -hmm. for everything, be grateful for the mm -hmm. now. And like, um, and I think that whether that is an upbringing element of it in your culture or whether it is just in society and the, the, that like have respect, don't, don't push things, don't step out of bounds, you know, like mm -hmm. this all you deserve right and and I think a lot of times you know and you see that also I mean you see that in so many different aspects you see that in um like like in my family even though I'm I'm white and grew mm -hmm. up privileged my dad uh you know he was a factory worker and grew up on food stamps and things like that and mm -hmm. uh and so you know to to him it was like if he had like something stable or good that be it. you know I remember like uh one of the one of my sisters wanted to go to college and I was little and all my sisters are older than me and he was like he was like floored that she wouldn't keep her job that she had um at that time and being uh, like promoted to like a manager position it was only at like McDonald's right you know but like and she got accepted into the University of Wisconsin Madison one of the best schools wow. you know as far as and, and I remember I was just, I think in kindergarten or maybe like, or maybe I was like in first or second grade or something like that. And I remember being like, why wouldn't you want her to go and do something like, you know, <laughs> and I remember like me, like standing up it was like this mindset. And so I can only take like my perspective. I can't mm -hmm. understand everybody's perspective, you know, so I can say, okay, how can I relate to what you went through with saying, okay, yeah. you're, you're sitting at the table, don't have more I can like I can just put into some analogies of things of like okay that happens mm -hmm. over and over again that people just you know it's 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 knowing that it's okay to to grow and that it's your birthright to grow right it's as a soul mm -hmm. like that's what we're doing we're mm -hmm. we're evolving we're growing we're advancing and the more the experience that we have in life we deserve to gain more for that right because yeah. we can give more Absolutely. Um, I wouldn't expect anything less than little Christina to question that and be that deep and philosophical at such a young age and be, and be the true rebel. Like, I love it. That's totally you, no, I, of course. Like, I mean, I distinctively remember, I was like, why do you care? Like, like, why can't she go? Because I remember her having like a crying fit in her like room. Mm -hmm. And I had like basketball practice and my dad was taking me to basketball practice. And I was just like, like, why, why do you like, you know, why can't she go to school? Like she's paying for it herself. Like, I just don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love like, that. And I think, for it or anything. <laughs> and I'm sure so many of us listening can resonate to your story, right. And, and my story. And we, we, we all find some way to resonate in community with these obstacles we've faced through systemic oppression societal, you know, the societal conditioning and the societal constructs of, um, you know, living in such a very cis, hetero, male, you know, uh, culture, society in the United States of America. 
um, possibly even globally, right? We're healing that toxic masculinity. But back on the topic of guilt and how that relates to today, I love you brought up, sorry, gratitude and guilt, excuse me. I love that you brought up gratitude because yes, I'm so grateful every damn day of my life, right? We all are. But if we try and mask um, our lows with gratitude, we have to sit back and, and realize like, oh, I'm spiritually bypassing because you know what, if I'm sitting here and I'm saying, well, I'm doing collective work, I'm being of service to my community. Um, and you know, I'm barely making a living. You got to take into account your livelihood. You're doing yourself a disservice, right? You're spiritually bypassing yourself. And in turn, what are we doing when we're doing this work? We're leading other people. So we're kind of, you know, through our own traumas, uh, perpetuating the same trauma back onto our community saying, be happy with what you got. You should be of service, you know, do low price points. Listen, I know our communities of color can't afford $500 sessions that, you know, we see our white spiritualists and our new age communities price pointing at. That's great, but we got to get to that point. So I am yeah. all about, you know, price pointing at a very reasonable uh, price point for our community, offering sliding scales, doing payment plans at the end of the day. If, you know, we're not pricing our value and all the energy we're putting in as practitioners and spiritualists, um, we're doing ourselves a disservice and our community a disservice. So that's why I wanted to talk about releasing guilt and shame. It's so important that we start addressing this because it's like this unspoken thing in the community. Yeah. And, and that is that, that level of also, I think that, you know, I mean, maybe this goes back so many know generations beyond generations but mm. the spiritual worker the people that were that everything that was to help or aid or assist communities it was all done like either in a nonprofit or through religious outlets mm. like the churches or the synagogues or the temples or whatnot and in all of that it was it was meant to be like you devote your life to mm -hmm. give give and you don't take and it's almost these vowels of poverty and it's mm -hmm. like the less that you need it's like almost like you are more spiritual if you need less mm -hmm. right mm. Do you, do you, mm. find that? you know and so mm. then people feel like the sense of guilt of like you know and I catch myself sometimes too I'm like oh well you know like I should just do more I should give more I should have you know like be you know but at, at a certain level like you said it perpetuates it. You're talking mm -hmm. about people having these beautiful lives where they can go and explore and be free to create, learn, do. And even if like, let's say if we're talking about spirituality, even if somebody uh -huh. wants to live a life of spirituality and service, mm -hmm. you need money to go and really <laughs> like dive in. And do you want to take, do you want to go on a, on a trip and, and meditate for 40 days? You need money to do that. Do you want to, mm -hmm. you know, go and do this? Do you, the more money you make, the more you can give and, 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 and yeah. from an abundant overflowing cup space, not in this limited scarcity, holding all the pentacles, you know, type of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think also just speaking from my perspective as a Latina in our Latinx community, you know, colonized religion. <laughs> I talk about this all the time. And I know folks are just like jazz, you know, Essa, like, give it a break. I can't give it a break because religion, you know, colonized religion, Catholicism, Christianity, um, has done a lot of harm to our community, um, done a lot of harm to wow. women, um, you know, our LGBTQ community. Right. And so through colonized religion, again, that another form of oppressing us was with that poverty mindset of being of service. Right. And if you're going to devote your life to religion or spirituality, um, you know, get rid of the matrix. Listen, I, I know I know capitalism is a problem, but we are a human at the end of the day. I think a lot of times we forget that when we make this full transition into spirituality, we're like, you know, rage against the machine, right? <laughs> but it's like, yo, yeah. you got bills to pay. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. no, you do. And, and I mean, and there is something true that you don't, you don't need things as much to validate you, you know? And so you do need less, but you're yeah. still operating yeah. within the system, you know? I find yes. that when, like when they, when they join the spiritual community and they go and they realize that there's this whole other, you know, like level and dimension that I'm like okay that's great but then you can't just like quit your job and do nothing you know like it, I mean you can eventually if you're you have you some can. plans and stuff I mean, right like there's there's this lack of like 
this that dimension exists but this one also exists and you gotta operate in both right you know? right you can't right say, just you know not function right because let me just say honey if money really wasn't a thing would your church really be passing around that basket asking for those donations yeah you, mm, right, right? Mm. some of the churches are, are like they make the most money oh yes honey and, mm-hmm. and, you know, so they're, they're not, they're making sure they get theirs, right? <laughs> and, and then if we go into this on like a deeper level, I think one of the things that I've realized in the last, you know, few years, and I don't know if this is something that you realized too, that got me into seeing the value of what we can provide of changing people's lives is yeah. that everything else comes and goes, right? But an impact yeah. on some soul and a change in their mindset, their belief system, hope, um, gratitude, energy, whatever that is for them, like that's of the highest value, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. when you start to see like, what are the things that have mattered most in your life, right? You know, like, I mean, we've all went through our healing, right? And it's the Mm -hmm. changes in, in, in letting go of elements and trauma and pain to allow me the freedom to become who I truly am is the most Mm -hmm. valuable thing that I've ever experienced and had in life. And that's what people are providing, right? Who's ever listening Mm -hmm. to this, if they're, if they're stepping out and being of service Mm -hmm. to another person and helping Mm -hmm. and facilitating, you're changing somebody's life. It's far more valuable than, you know, a t-shirt, you know, that somebody might pay $75 for, right? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. You listen, I'm all for everybody getting their money. Like you get yours, but it's just insane. Like where, where we decide to spend our money, right? Like I'm down to pay, you know, two G's for that Gucci bag. Right. Oh, but I got a spiritual coaching class that can help you really work through your traumas help you really take accountability and face yourself so you can rise above and become better. And, you know, I'm pricing at X amount, you know, but I'm not down for that. You know, I don't see that as an investment. It's so, it's so odd to me how we're willing to invest in these material things. But when it comes to our spirituality and our mental health, especially as Latinx community, because even till this day, mental health is still taboo. You know, if you're going to go see a therapist, I mean, loca? Are you crazy? Like yeah. you're going insane. No, we can't. We can't because the whole family is going to find out and then it's going to reveal our, our, you know, our skeletons in the closet. Right. So it's like this dialogue can really break down so many different like avenues of our personal journey of where we need to release guilt and shame. How are we truly investing in ourselves? Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I mean that it, it bears to be repeated how many people, whether they sp- go out and spend three, four, five hundred dollars <laughs> on their hair, and yet they don't want to do a healing or uh, right. you know, a session, or like you said, here's this course that will literally shift your life for the rest of your life. But like this yeah. handbag that you'll use for a month <laughs> because after a month, it'll be too old for you and you don't want to be seen in public with it again. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that, that Christina, like is totally appropriate for a whole another dialogue. Like the problem with fast fashion and how that's contributing to like, just like so much global harm with the environment and, you know, the climate crisis and how, you know, how there's just so much to go into this, but to your point, you know, please y'all pay your practitioners, like pay, pay your tarot readers. You know, if you see someone who's undervaluing themselves or underpricing themselves, like I'm the first one to be like, yo sis, you know what? Your quality is on point. You put in a lot of energy. Like you really devote yourself. We need to raise your price point. You're worthy of that. And people are going to pay you for that. And quite frankly, that's how we started tracking um, stronger clientele with a stronger intention of people who are seeing your services as an investment. Because I know, I know for damn sure, Christina, if I'm investing, I'm putting, you know, you know, money down. I'm like, I'm seeing this as an investment. I'm going to follow through. I'm not going to flake on you. I'm not going to cancel. I'm not going to try and reschedule 10 times on you. Right. (laughs) Which is another really important point. If you aren't valuing you, more likely another person isn't valuing you. And that's like, you know, we want to be kind. We want to do all these things for pro bono or, yeah. you know, yeah. like for free for people as like, okay, they can't afford it. Anytime I've done that, 
it's been the same shit, right? They mm-hmm. cancel, they reschedule, they they <laughs> show up 30 minutes late. And I'm like, I'm giving you this session for free. And you yeah. have the ability to cancel on me twice and show up 30 minutes late. You, you know, it's like, you know, but you feel bad for them and you feel like, oh, like you need to help this person. But it's like, you know, even if, you know, run a sliding scale, if that's the case, set your prices yeah. at what you need. And if somebody can't afford it and they really can't afford it, let, let them, let them uh, do the scale of yeah. what they can't afford. So you can still feel like you're being of service, but they got to yes. value it. They got to put yeah. something down in form of some kind of currency so that mm-hmm. they show up for their self. It's not even about you receiving the money. It's about them showing up for them. Yes, I love that you stated that. So, so many great messages just now that you provided because that reminds me, you know, to bring up this for discussion. Um, you know, when when we're trying our best to be of service to other people, and you know, whether that's through, you know, sliding scale or you know, payment plans and different price points. And if we're undervaluing ourselves and we're really operating from that guilt mindset, that shame mindset, again, as women, we're constantly taught, especially women in Latinx cultures, right? Your needs come last, even mothers, right? Mothers culturally are taught, your children come first, your family come first. And sure, fabulous, they they should, but like, uh, to what cost? Do we self-sacrifice and we self-sabotage and then we continuously allow people to cross our boundaries? And so money is a wonderful way. Abundance mindset is a wonderful way for us to, implement these boundaries right so if we're stretching the rules a bit for people and i've caught myself doing that a couple of times christina with people were like all right i'll let it slide you know we can reschedule or you know what you were 30 minutes like this time next time try not to be but then they're late again for their next session see when you allow people to cross your boundaries once that's all they need to feel they have permission to continuously do that yeah and and that's part of the lack mindset that we as practitioners and women and women of color people of color continues to have to work through because we're taught again put our needs last you don't have any boundaries and if you got boundaries they ain't gonna be respected anyway right so it's hard for us to show up for ourselves continuously and this is how we continuously decolonize our mindset and i put in quotations mark because i'm like decolonize and decolonization i'm so burnt out with the word at this point but it's important that we do bring these terms up so you know folks listening can can kind of grasp that so what are your what are your thoughts on that yeah no i i, I find that it's so true that you give people an inch and they take a mile, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, there was, a, there was a, as you were speaking and, and sharing about these boundaries, it also made me think about in areas of where, and I mean, this is, I think, so deep seated in, in our mind. And this is what we're like working on is like, how do you shift yeah. these pretty consciousness? But how do you shift also your programming, right? You know, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. the way that people, like that women, people of color, LGBTQ community, every mm-hmm. any, any disadvantaged, um, discriminated against aspect of society in order for us to rise up, to not be, you know, um, devalued is you have to mm. start valuing yourself. But yeah. then you have to notice where does it show up, right? And I don't mm-hmm. know if you know, mm-hmm. notice this and, and things, but it's almost like there's certain people that I find myself wanting to please more that I will give more like leeway to. Yeah. And sometimes that can be, you know, uh, certain types, types of individuals or certain types of demographics. But, but, but like, I, I, I notice, you know, it's like, I almost want to like, like overly please them, you know, I'm like, and, uh-huh. and it's interesting for like me and I don't know what it is like for, you know, uh, being Latino, and uh or like in you know uh, others other cultures but for me like yeah, yeah. poor anybody that has money which is this is the most bizarre freaking mind fuck <laughs> anybody that has money that can afford it's almost like i want to discount or please them more because mm-hmm. i don't feel of like working with them right it's mm. like I can have endless celebrity clients and like all of a sudden I'm like oh we should get them like a little like discount or we should do this or like and I'm like they're multi-millionaires my session isn't even charged much you know like like <laughs> and it but 
like I find them. So I don't know like what your experience like that is, but Absolutely. you find that with different groups. Absolutely. It's really interesting you say that because, um, you know, well, I think ours is a particular case because uh, I too have worked with, you know, high clientele, you know, people I can't, we can't really mention. And I find myself overcompensating and overgiving because it comes down for me personally speaking, um, wanting to prove myself. Mm -hmm. This mindset of needing to prove myself for like whatever my reasons, you know, of my childhood conditioning and my upbringing. Right. And so it's true. Like these people are billionaires and that just are millionaires or whoever, right. Just successful people that speaks to the energy of money, the power of money, the authority that money has that yeah. still within us, you and I individually and anyone else here who can resonate with this are still having to work through rising up and saying, well, listen, regardless if that person's a billionaire, a millionaire, you know, if they're making half a mil a year, whatever, 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 I'm viewing them as much more successful than me. I am still just as abundant, still just as worthy, regardless of, you know, my paycheck and my income and my salary, because you and I, all of us here are fountains of abundance, right? We are made of the same chemical star DNA, universal makeup as you know, those other people that we're viewing on this pedestal. So yeah. that's a wonderful way for us to come back into our internal dialogue and our narrative. And I have to remind myself sometimes like, uh, you know, Christina, don't give those discounts. They don't need to make them pay full price. You know? <laughs> like, know, but they can afford it. <laughs> but you know what you know? I mean, right? It's mm -hmm. like these, like, oh, like, I think for anybody that's listening, when you, you know, that that's, that's where, you know, that's something you need to work on. Right. Yeah. For and sure. It's like, for sure. Okay, why is this okay here, but this isn't okay for you? Or why do you, do you feel that you're going over and trying to please or prove that you're good enough over here? Or for me, like mm -hmm. this, whatever. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but here it's fine. Like, like, as you said, we are, you know, in monetary is only one form of abundance. Right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's so many different forms of abundance. That's you right. Know? abundance of great relationships, abundance of joy, abundance of health, abundance of mm -hmm. happiness, abundance of like, of talent, creativity, knowledge, communication, like your different skill sets that you have. Mm -hmm. Like we all have different things, right? Yes. Yeah. When we start to see our worth and our value and know that we don't need to compare ourselves to another and we can just appreciate us Mm -hmm. in what we have to offer right yeah you know, somebody else might have something else to offer but we have something to offer I don't want absolutely to absolutely and I just had to say for y'all who don't really know Christina or the Liberate family like uh Christina offers such a huge big heart like you're such a genuine person and you know you've been um you know since I've met you someone who has been a true ally for us as people of color practitioners. I know you've worked with so many people in, in, in my community, our community, and, you know, collaborated with them or invited them in to do events with you, bought their books and housed them. I mean, you're working to buy my Oracle that can house it, you know, like, so before, before all the hype and before we really started the collective conversation around, you know, the consciousness of allyship and bringing in other communities of color not minorities we're not saying that anymore y'all uh, liberate has been doing that liberate has definitely been doing been doing that so if you if you know you're finding a reason to support liberate hollywood that's that's why and you know y'all support the lgbtq community as well so i mean i just want to shout y'all and give you some highlight right there because i'm so Aww. grateful <laughs> thank you we try to we try to be like a united front i feel like we have doing your you best know, a mixture of all different different types of uh, uh, practitioners from different corners mm -hmm. of the globe, and we're just all mm -hmm. here to see somebody's a soul and like how yeah. everybody deserves happiness. Everybody deserves to experience the most out of life and their truth. And mm -hmm. and it's when we can get connected to that, you know, we all every we all are looking for the same things. We just need yeah. to uncover and find them. You know, absolutely. So we'll more obstacles to jump over than others and mm -hmm. the others need to help fight to make sure that those obstacles can start to be lowered. absolutely 
Absolutely. So well put. And, you know, for anyone who's listening, who isn't a practitioner, or you're not doing spiritual work, or maybe you're considering it, but even like, I feel Christina, this conversation is so helpful because, you know, even my past self, you know, my past life in this life, when I was a young Latina, you know, in corporate America, in these very white male dominated spaces, I wish I had someone to tell me, you need to value yourself more, you know, you need to, you need to speak up more, even if no matter how many times they try and shut you down, um, you know, or shut you up, like, you deserve fair compensation. So if you're sitting here listening and watching to, to us speak, please know your feelings are validated. If you are feeling undervalued, overworked, burnt out, disregarded, and you know, your employer or your manager, your superiors are treating you as if they could do without you because you're replaceable. I always tell folks, you shouldn't have to try, even in relationships, y'all, you shouldn't have to try and convince someone to keep you. That's the problem, okay? If you're having to constantly fight this resistance and prove to people why why you should be there, why you should take up space, why they should, you know, be part of your life, hmm, that's the red flag. We need to change that, you know? So please, um, no matter where you're at in your journeys, I hope you find, you know, through this conversation, some inspiration to start reworking our mindset. I know a lot of people are like, oh, mindset work is so woo woo. Mindset, <laughs> mindset work is very powerful. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one, you know, the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. You know, it yeah, helps I mean, us go. It's, go it's, ahead, it's go the foundation, you know? In right. It helps us go back to our reworking our traumas. Like, where does this stem from? Where within my wounding have I been projecting this? And so I'm creating this limiting belief that's further creating these these blocks because I'm self-sabotaging. And that's okay. We got to lovingly reflect on those moments, you know? Like, I think a lot of times, Christina, when we have these awakenings of like, they're so, they can be really intense and you're like, wow, like I've been fooling myself for this long. You know, I've been telling myself this lie for these many years and it can be really painful. It's not an easy process, right? To look at ourselves in the mirror um, and hold ourselves in grace, you know, and empathy, just like we do for everybody else. Like if you could do it for everybody else, why aren't you giving it to yourself first? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And so, I mean, mm-hmm. that's so, I mean, you were on point on, just that nobody should ever have to convince anybody any job no. any relationship any friendship any family like mm. you yes if you are experiencing that it's like this is a journey you know if you're mm-hmm. if you're gonna like traffic jam um <laughs> you can either choose to keep on sitting in the traffic jam or you can get off in the next exit and and go and do a different <laughs> route plan something yeah different. like you know what are you committed to in your life are you committed to just like sit in there like banging your head against the steering wheel because like the traffic isn't moving for hours yeah. or do you yeah. see that there's opportunities to do other things go other places live life still right right Right. And we're not sitting here saying it's easy because, you know, granted, like a lot of a lot of these cycles that we karmically go through continuously in our soul lessons and our soul patterns, you know, stem from the conditioning of our generational trauma. So that's how we can start doing generational healing. Looking back at the cycles my my grandma repeated, my mother repeated, my great grandmothers, you know, or the men in my lineage. You know, how can I start healing the inner masculine within me and the inner masculine within my my you know lineages and ancestrally? Because it's not up to men to heal the toxic masculinity in our lineages, although they do need to step up and rise up, which they are starting to do now. The masculines are definitely doing that, but you know, all of this all of this dialogue around releasing guilt, releasing shame, releasing poverty mindset, your story of your ancestors is not in vain. You know, all that trauma they went through, especially as women, especially as Latinx, like, damn, we got some F up, F up traumas, right? It's not yours to keep and to keep, you know, perpetuating. So when we finally say, you know what, if I'm noticing I'm in a relationship where 
I'm constantly allowing someone to choose addictions over me. And I realized why well, my father did that. And I realized my father's father did that. Right. That's when we can start saying, I'm releasing that lack mentality of poverty mindset and this guilt and shame. Cause sometimes people don't want to walk away from situations. Cause like, if I do that and I free myself, I then, you know, remind other people of how they're letting themselves down. Right. So for the complacency and the comfort of someone else and their traumas, you know, I won't really liberate myself because that's going to, you know, make other people feel bad about their situation. You don't hold yourself back from your ascension just because other people aren't consciously choosing to do so for whatever reason, you know? And, and then you're also not giving people the opportunity or seeing the, that maybe they won't judge you for that. Maybe they will actually be inspired by you doing that. So, you know, yes. it's your opinion or your view of how somebody's going to act or respond onto somebody else. It's almost like you're, mm. you're holding them down. You got to hold mm. them up. What, you know, like you got to believe yeah. that they're going to see something good in that. And if they don't, that's not your story. That's not your chapter mm -hmm. to be created yeah. for them. You're living your right. life. And oftentimes they're going to your point, they're going to be inspired. That's how, when we start doing this work ourselves, you start seeing little by little, your parents are inspired, your grandparents, your cousins, they're asking you like, Oh, what's a cleanse or, Ooh, I heard about the full moon. What's a full moon. You know, little by little, they start, right. That's how you start trickling that energy out to do intergenerational healing, you know? Um, and so especially for those of us listening um, to your point, Christina, for those of us listening who are coming out of like the spiritual closet, right. Um, especially when we come from cultures where colonized religion is the yeah. form of ultimate authority. How dare you defy it, right? Yeah. So now you're going to go and seek spiritualism, you know, aka brujeria, witchcraft. <laughs> it can be really hard. It can be really hard because people don't, may not be able to hold a safe space because again, it goes against what we understand, what we've been conditioned to, you know, treat as authority or respect, right? Because especially in Latinx cultures, like how dare you defy the patriarchy? How dare you defy the father? How dare you defy any form of, you know, um, authority or power? That's why so many of us have a really hard time grasping coming out and stepping into our power because we've been oppressed. And I'm sure you can relate as, you know, women and people here who are listening as, you know, women and just like obviously the LGBTQ community it's really hard to step up and start showing up for ourselves when we've been systemically oppressed to not do that. Again, that goes back to releasing guilt, releasing shame and poverty mindset, you know, and then having that flourish in all areas of your life, financially, wealth, fulfillment, joy, health, friendship, colleagues, collaborations, peers, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And then that, if you care about others, you can't help but to, when you really care about others, caring about yourself, because you are going to be that inspiration. You are mm -hmm. going to be, you, you know, that change, but as what you said before, it ain't easy, right? You know, a lot yeah. of these things are so programmed in. So, you know, we, we might be talking and uh, as two people that have overcome different elements yes. of suppression and in, in our each way here, mm -hmm. but that sometimes can take, you know, months, years to, years. You know, like, you know, uh, to mm -hmm. really step forward, but it's worth it. Right. You know, yeah. you gotta understand that our mind, our mind, even if it's misery, like to keep on dating mm -hmm. that same person, like you were mentioning, like, okay, oh, this person's mm -hmm. shooting addiction over me, but yet my father did that. And the, my father's father did that. It's uh -huh. so like, not only is it like in, in the spiritual lineage, it's also so in embedded in our unconscious mind and this like yeah. that's what we know so we crave we our knowing because it's familiar and familiar is comfortable even if it's misery right mm -hmm. that's what so many people you see over and over again they date the same person just with a different head right you know it's like <laughs> you're the same character all over again same problems all over again it's like why not because they were super happy in that past relationship that they decided they wanted that same relationship again but it was because it's no, but the moment mm -hmm. that you start identifying it. And I think if anybody's listening and saying, okay, I know that there's things that I want different in my life. There's the things that you know, and there's the things that you don't know. And if you just mm -hmm. start with the things that you know, and start diving down that rabbit hole, you're going to keep on, you know, it's like a snowball going down a mountainside. It's going to keep on gaining more and more mass. And before you know it, it's going to, you're going to be unstoppable because mm -hmm. you're going to feel that seed or that 
fire inside of passion for yourself, of truth to yourself. Mm. And it takes a little bit, like if you start a fire in the woods or whatnot, it takes a while to get it going, right? Yeah, and then you get, it does. And more and more, like, you know, if you try to add the big logs right away, it doesn't really work. You just little sticks, maybe some paper, different things. And then, but once it gets going, that fire is really hard to put out. And yeah. that is the fire of your truth of your heart of your soul of your individuality Mm -hmm. i mean if we are meant to be like everybody else in this Mm -hmm. world then we would be like everybody else but there's seven we would look the same yeah yeah, there's 7.6 billion (laughs) people on this planet and not not one person is like you yeah what a beautiful thing what a beautiful thing so so fun Um, And I love that you stated all that because I think so many of us listening right now and myself included needed this conversation to kind of, you know, with this Pisces full moon that just passed, let me just say (laughs) the energy was heavy, (laughs) you know, it was heavy. Right. So um, I, I, I want to thank you again, just for allowing us to have this conversation, Christina. I I love how it's been going so far. Um, So I don't know, like, what else do you want to talk about in relation to this? Where do you want to navigate next in our conversation? Oh, well, I want to navigate. I I always like to have people have like actionable steps to take, right? Yes. We've talked a lot about theory and um, about an understanding of where Mm -hmm. and why and that change can happen, but how, like, you know, in Mm -hmm. your experience, how do you help guide people through the work that you do through the work that you've done on yourself? Like what are some of those small steps that the people that are listening can say, okay, you know what? I need to move forward. I want to move forward. How? Yeah. Love that. Yes. 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 Let's get into it. I am a huge advocate for therapy. Traditional therapy is wonderful. Um, I'm going to list off different formats. And I know sometimes some people can't afford therapy, right? Because, you know, so many different reasons, whether you're, you don't have insurance or whatever, but therapy has been huge in my personal journey. And the, I am always welcoming my, my peers and our community to go into therapy, especially as Latinx. It's time we really start destigmatizing the negative mis- misconception around therapy, because that can be truly helpful. Um, and then also, you know, you're a hypnotherapist and actually past life regression sessions have helped me a lot with identifying past life blocks um, and, and how I'm still bringing that energy in, even as it relates to poverty mindset and whatever traumas we've experienced, especially those of us who are spiritualists, you know, I find uh, often in conversations with peers that they have seen in past lives, you know, they were persecuted or they were um, disregarded for their work in the community because again, it created, you know, empowerment for people and how are we continuing that shame and then holding that here in this lifetime and you know continuing that that energy exchange of like I need to release it but I don't know how and then now let's say you're not really into that you're like whoa hypnotherapy is a little bit intimidating um what I like to offer up is very simple no matter what your socioeconomic status is I always encourage a SWOT analysis s-w-o-t SWOT analysis And the SWOT analysis are your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. So if I want to go ahead and address the situation in my life, like why do I have lack mindset? Where is that stemming from? Well, first I need to go ahead and address, well, what are my strengths as a human being? I offer a lot to the table in this capacity, right? I'm a very giving person. I have a lot of knowledge under my belt. I have 15 years of experience, but they're still paying me as a coordinator when I should be the VP of this company right? (laughs) Go through the weaknesses. Well, what are, and this is where you got to get real with yourself very lovingly. You know, what are my weaknesses, right? Well, I don't really speak up for myself. Why? Well, because at a young age, my voice was shut out. At a young age, I was told by some sort of disciplinary that my, you know, my thoughts don't matter. My voice doesn't matter. How can I start healing my throat chakra and working through that, right? And then the O is for the opportunities. Where can I grow? Where can I gain? Where can I expand? Where can I heal? Well, I could start stepping into my authenticity, into my truth. I could start speaking up for myself a little bit more. The next time I'm in a, I'm in a meeting, maybe I'm going to raise my hand and actually share my ideas and my talents, right? And then my threats. Well, what are the threats? Well, by not growing and working through these blockages and identifying where they stand from, the threats are, well, I stay unhappy. I stay stagnant. I don't feel fulfilled. I'm working a dead-end job. I'm going through the motions. And guess what? I don't like any of that. 
So these threats are pretty major for me. These threats are what's going to encourage me to go ahead and start releasing this. Yeah. So what do you think about that? <laughs> I love that. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a, it's so great. You're the first time that I've heard that approach into an individual, but I don't know why I've never thought of, of that, you know, because in business, you do it all the time. You're constantly all the time. other companies and your competition and you, yep. and looking at how, how do you grow, you know, and, mm-hmm. you know, and I've been in different businesses from, from entertainment to tech to all this other area, you know, yeah. Stuff. So, I mean, um, but doing it for a person, doing uh-huh. it for yourself, right? That's yeah. amazing. Like, I love that. And, yeah. And I love that that doesn't cost anything. It just costs your nope. time to sit there with a pen and a piece of paper and to look at those different areas and see, you know, what action steps you can take in your opportunities, you know, like what, what can you do to move forward to to grow that, to Mm -hmm. have that opportunity become a bigger strength, right? So that maybe Mm -hmm. if that strength category grew a little bit more from your weaknesses, maybe you would start Mm -hmm. evaluating yourself. Maybe you would start seeing, you know, how can you heal those weaknesses? Are they healable, right? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Absolutely. I love that. Yep. So please share that message. I'm always pushing that out to everybody. I mean, it were, it's actually a really phenomenal exercise, when, especially when you're facilitating like in a group or just one on one and to see folks just have like these breakthroughs of like, wow, it's actually this simple. It's actually this straightforward. And, you know, now with this knowledge, I feel armed. I feel ready. I feel like I have the tools to go ahead and start my path forward on my trajectory of healing. Like, what do I really need to do that's tangible and practical? And that's how the SWOT analysis can help you. Yeah. And I'm a firm believer that the change is all about perception shift. Mm, a thousand you know? percent. And a thousand percent. <laughs> it's hard or you think, think, I mean, think about this for anybody that's, that's listening. And I mean, now that it's COVID times a little less of this going on and now in the last, you know, two years or so, but before mm-hmm. when we lived normal life, uh, old normal, um, <laughs> you know, like if, if let's say you got, you got invited to something, it was somebody's birthday and it was next week and you were really looking forward because it was a group of people that you haven't seen in a while and yeah. you RSVP, it was going to be a spot at dinner. So you, your, your RSVP counted. Okay. And then you get the, the week comes, you were looking forward to it. And then suddenly that Monday, it's going to happen on Friday. And you're mm-hmm. like, feeling like, oh man, I have to go to this thing on Friday. Mm-hmm. The moment that you shifted it to a have to and feeling like it's an obligation, it starts mm. weighing on you. And this was something <laughs> that like, you were looking forward to, but now like that it's weighing on you because you feel like you have to go and that it's yeah. obligated, suddenly you don't want to go to this dinner. And it's like seeing people, you know, we've all been there. We've all been, yeah. we've to a birthday or a wedding or something where at first we were looking forward to it and then we were feeling the obligation of it mm-hmm. and it changes how we feel it changes mm-hmm. the whole goddamn experience too sorry for swearing but like if you go yeah, yeah, into yeah. something in an experience and you were really excited to go there you were really excited to go to that concert you're really excited to see your friend's show you were really whatever you have an amazing time mm-hmm. but if you feel like you had to show up and that it was an obligation you might have had a good time but you probably don't have as much of a good time right yeah and like yeah imagine if we use that kind of element and that's where the SWOT analysis that I think is so genius to use is that if somebody can just have a quick little perception change mm-hmm. and see like you know I do have strengths I have opportunities mm-hmm. that's part of the control of changing those opportunities like that mm-hmm. means I can take action towards it right it yeah. empowers somebody You know, if I let these threats come in, my life isn't going to be what I want. And I'm going to lose out on my experience of, of what I truly love or want, or, you know, and Mm -hmm. I think that having that, if somebody just has that perception, man. Oh yeah. It changes instantly. It changes instantly. I mean, we said like change is hard and, and it, that, that, that it's not easy. I should, shouldn't say it's hard. It's not hard. It's just not easy because it's programmed. I mean, like, right, we, right. Nothing we do when you break it down to the smallest thing, it's a simple yeah. step. Right? 
right? Simple step. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. I love to always state, you know, our homegirl, Oprah, Oprah once said, <laughs> you don't have to, you don't have to know the whole game plan, the whole strategy and how you're going to get there. All you have to know. And I love this because I have to remind myself, what is your next step? And from your next step comes your next step. And from that step, you get the next maybe two steps. So all you need to know is what is my next step I need to do to pivot? I need to create change. I need to create change. How? Okay. This is how I'm going to create change through these actions, through these behaviors. And then from that, you then garner the energy, like you said, and the momentum that allows you to snowball into this new energy dynamic. Yeah, there you go. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Well, you know, I think that that's a good spot to like stop mm-hmm. is that, you know, that, that step and yeah. you know, take those little steps at a time for those changes. So that SWOT mm-hmm. analysis and, and also find you. So where can people find you? <laughs> also that, please let's, let's connect. Um, thank you for allowing me to go ahead and plug myself, Christina. Um, you can find me on Instagram, esoteric underscore essa. I do have a Patreon, very affordable um, with lots of resources, Esoteric Essa as well. And I have a podcast as well. Better Work Bitch is the podcast. And then hopefully soon enough, you can get my Oracle deck, The Modern Spiritual Latina at yes. the Great Hollywood locations. Really, really exciting. And my website is Illuminati.com. But um, I'm just so grateful. Thank you, everybody, for listening to us. If nothing else, um, hopefully, you know, this conversation left you feeling empowered. And through that energy, you know, if you can pay it forward, that's how we can help the collective. You don't have to be a tarot reader. You don't have to be a psychic. You don't have to drop everything and start, you know, doing sound healing for the collective. We're all light workers in our own way through energy exchange, you know, and that's how we can all contribute. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Yay. Thank you so much. So much pleasure. I hope I see you in the flesh soon enough. Yeah, you for know? an event. Yeah, we're planning something. So yeah, we'll talk I about that later. <laughs> thank you so much um, for you, all Christina. those that are listening please like subscribe share this content yeah. um even if yeah. you just a little comment with a little thumbs up or something mm-hmm. it just helps the wonderful algorithm gods share yes. it so yeah uh, thank you for for doing that and um until next time thank you liberate yourself thank you. bye Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, Also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, U-R-S-E-L-F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. I'm Christina, founder of Liberate. This is our mascots, Miss Piggy and Mr. Chew. Liberate is like the Willy Wonka chocolate factory for spirituality. You might wonder what the heck that is. And so basically, Liberate is a place of sheer magic, activating and reigniting that magic into you so that you can live your fullest potential and most fulfilled life. When you walk through the door, you're going to see magic everywhere you look. You look down and you see a crystal floor made with over 10,000 pounds of crystals. You say that's a lot, but I know I laid them and had to do numerous trips to the crystal store to buy more and more crystals. There's all of these beautiful, magical gemstones that are activating and creating healing from the beneath and the surface. You see the tree of life when you first walk in. You go upstairs and every room has its custom sacred geometry mural in it. And then you notice that each of the rooms are labeled with different uh, names of deities or archangels from different traditions and, and religions from all over the world. This is Liberate. Liberate is a space of union. Liberate is a space of creativity. Liberate is a space of expansion. And we're here to help heal you, transform, and help you rediscover yourself.